Well, good evening. I hope you're excited today. I'm excited. The kids are nervous. Hey, there's Thomas. I didn't see you walk in, Thomas. Um, we're going to share, and I'm going to share a little bit first. I'm going to let the students come up and share a little bit, then I'm going to close us out with some other things. But I just want to tell you a little bit about what World Changers is. World Changers um, has been going on for 25 years. I think it started in 1990. Um, it's a partnership between the, the North American Mission Board and LifeWay. And so students across uh, the, the United States go to different sites. We happen to go to Birmingham this year, but they have in Birmingham and Chattanooga, um, New Orleans. They'll have them up north in California. They'll have them in Puerto Rico, just all over the place. And uh, there are different types of sites. There are some that are just uh, construction, which is the one we went to uh, with the main purpose. We go into uh, different uh, neighborhoods and we do construction on houses that have been, uh, have been approved by the city and LifeWay and uh, North American Mission Board that need something. It's not just anybody. They have to go through a process before we can work on their house. Um, and while we're working on their house, we also do some neighborhood evangelism, going door to door and talking to um, their neighbors and things to, with the purpose of sharing the gospel. This year, they had the goal of sharing the gospel 25,000 times. And as of last week, or the, the week we left, um, they had already done it around 15,000 times. Um, the week that we were there alone, there was a, 194 pre presentations of the gospel. And I know of one salvation, um, and that was actually with the students we had, um, it, with all the students that came together. And uh, I think there were two or three um, of the people that, in the neighborhood. So, so the, it's a twofold thing. They have other projects or community projects where they go out and do more like backyard Bible clubs and that type of thing. Um, so the students don't just get to go. There's actually a process for them to be able to go to World Changers. Um, one, they had to do a project before they left here. We actually went to First Pass and did some stuff with Brian's church, and they went through a Bible study, so they have to get ready. Um, we don't let just any student go to World Changers. Um, one, you, first, you have to be a believer. But two, we, you have to make, we have to make sure they're ready because they're going to go serve somewhere. Um, and if they are not ready to do that after a long week of getting up really early, uh, working all day and, and not going to bed to real late, you can see just the trouble that may cause if you have um, those who aren't really ready for that type of trip. Um, this particular trip we went to was seven days long. Um, we get there and we get to know some people. Then when we work from Monday to Friday, mainly painting. We had some that got to work on a deck and do some things like that. They'll tell you about. Had one crew working on the roof, but they get to go uh, do these different things. Every uh, participant has a, a chance to 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 be something that world changers. And actually, for our group, pretty much somebody from our group was doing something um, or anything that we could do at World Changers. We actually Rhonda Anderson, who's not here tonight, was the first aid coordinator for the whole project. Um, so basically meant if they needed somebody at 3 o'clock in the morning because somebody's sick, they called Rhonda. She had to go take care of it. Somebody fell off a ladder. They had to take Rhonda from wherever she at and go see about those people. Um, I was able to be a crew chief where I actually led one of the projects. Alan uh, was able to be a crew encourager. So he's, he's side by side with the crew chief, encouraging the students how to work and just encouraging them to do things. The students had opportunities to be a medic, a break master, a devotion leader, and, uh, and I'm missing one. What am I missing? The, the recorder. Thank you. The, the evangelism recorder. Um, and I was so proud of our students. We took eight. We had one of the smaller groups there. And we had a group, in a, a church in front of us, and they had about 40 kids. And after they called all the names or the different avenues that they could serve, most of our kids were gone. The, the, the youth pastor in front of me looked at his group and said, man, we got more kids than anybody here. And not one of our kids got up and served in any capacity that I just mentioned. And so more than half our students were in those capacities serving as evangelism reporters, serving as the medics or the, or the break masters, even the devotion leaders. So our kids did an incredible job. Um, I, I knew this before I left. I still think this uh, to this day. We have the best youth group there is. Um, amen. Kids, they love you. Um, I don't recall one complaint during the week. Um, I'm sure they made no complaints I had, but they didn't have any complaints during the week. Um, some of them were a little nervous to go because they were going to be split up. Uh, they didn't serve all together. Each person had somebody else on their crew that they knew besides Alan and I. Um, they put us by ourselves, but um, they had to work with, with other students from across 
the nation, people they didn't know, and had to come together and serve for a common purpose. And so I'm going to let them come and, and share some of that, and then I'll, I'll come back over and tell you a little bit about our speaker and the, the title, Reconcile of the Week. So, Jade, since you're just that first in line, come on up. Just throw you in the fire, girl. Come on. They are a little nervous. So, uh, um, Jade, that's the wrong way. I'm Jade. Oh, okay. I'll start with the first day we saw our assigned house. We had to paint the outside of the house, and I thought it would be really simple, like you just pick up a brush and start painting. But I was very, very wrong. Later that day, we had a guy come and tell us all the steps we had to take before we painted the house. And I think the first step was to scrape off all the old paint. And I thought this was interesting because it's like how in order to start fresh with God or repaint, you have to give up your old faded self or paint. And then after you scrape, you have to pick up all the chips. That part is like after you start fresh and give up your old life, you take a step back and look at how, how you were before and how you thought everything was okay, but it wasn't. And you didn't realize how important that stuff was until after you did it. Well, I just thought that was interesting, and I just wanted to share that. I will admit I was skeptical, skeptical about doing world changers. I thought that I would be completely miserable working in the heat. It wasn't that bad. I was so focused on sharing the gospel that the work seemed like a little thing. Evangelizing was the main goal. I learned a lot and was blessed to be a part of it. <laughs> and was blessed to be a part of it. I can't wait until next year when we do it again. Logan, since you're next in line, I'll let you come on up, brother. Hello. Good evening. My name is Logan, and I am one of the 11 people who went on World Changers last week. Um, we would, every day when we got up, Monday through Friday, we would go to the site, and we would be, all be excited and ready to work. And so we'd get there, and we would do a devotion for about 15 to 20 minutes, and then we would just go to work. We scraped, which was not a lot of fun, as I'm sure many of you have done that before. And then we would prime the house and paint the house. It took us a whole week to do it. We... Also caulked, replaced rotten boards, and put plexiglass over two broken windows. By the end of the week, the house was looking much nicer than when we first came. I really enjoyed meeting and spending time with our crew. All the people were nice and good Christian people to hang out with. One guy I met wanted to do marketing when we started the week, but by the end of the week, he had decided that he wanted to switch his career choice and help people instead. Uh, a lot of days we would walk through the neighborhood and talk to people like we would go out and we would just evangelize with the people who are on the street. We would we met a lot of really nice people out there and we'd just go out we'd talk to them and we'd share the gospel. We using the fact that we were out working as a key to unlock them and so they would talk to us and we would we were going out and fulfilling the great commission Jesus Jesus commands us to do in Matthew. Uh, it was a really a great trip and one I would definitely go on again. I thoroughly enjoyed getting to meet new people, help people in the local community, and share the gospel. I learned a lot about myself, this youth group, and God through this trip, and I can't wait till we go again next year. Hey, you come on, Thomas. Guys, we're going to just go down the line, so y'all just be ready. Hi, I'm Thomas. I was in a group which consisted of me, Jade, and eight others. We were assigned a house that didn't need much work. All we had to do was paint. There was very little scraping and we had to do a, a little bit of caulking and wood filler. I was kind of disappointed because I was praying that I would get a job like decking or roofing. I'm not really a big painter. But God had a different plan. Monday morning, we get to the house and we work all day. And get pretty close to completing the house. The only problem was we didn't have any ladders. So we couldn't do the top portion of the house. 
The next day, we show up. We still didn't have any ladders. So they sent half our group out, and we went around the block praying for the homeowners around the block and anyone we found on the street. We would share the gospel with them and just pray for them. We were in a pretty laid-back town, part of town. It was the equivalent to Long Beach. There was a lot of older people, and it wasn't as rough as a neighborhood. Wednesday was our day where we went and we only had a half day. So we worked till lunch, and then Tony took us to laser tag, and then we went to the mall with the rest of the groups. One of the groups even went to a water park. We finally get our ladders on Thursday. We finished the house because we had very little less left to do, just the top portion. We were actually the first group to complete our house. Friday morning, we find out what house we're going to. We go to another house, which is in a little bit rougher part of the town. Um, they already completed all the scraping and everything they had to do with just more painting. So we finished painting the house, and we were the only crew to actually finish two houses during the week. My favorite part of the week was just helping those who needed to be helped. I'm going to read you a verse that was in our devotion book. It just jumped out to me. 2 Corinthians 5.20 Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, certain that God is appealing through us. We plead to our... We plead to Christ on our behalf to be reconciled to God. One, oh, wow, this is loud. I don't think I need that. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> Just know that your dad can turn or okay. turn it down. So, um... No, it's not on at all. Okay, there we go. Okay, so um, I'm Alex, and I really enjoyed my week at World Changers. A lot of it was I liked meeting all these new people. Cause, so it's like, at first you're like, okay, so I'm not going to be with my youth group. I'm going to be with a bunch of weird strangers who I've never met before. So on Sunday, we went to the churches that were sponsoring our groups. and um, So they, they were actually, you know, they weren't crazy. They were, they were pretty normal, except one girl who didn't like cheese. I still don't understand that. But anyways... So, um, we started work on Monday, and Monday we basically scraped, and we scraped all the old paint off, we peeled it off, and the rest of the week we did a lot of painting. So, we painted the house, and it kind of sounds boring, but it wasn't really boring because we got to talk to everyone, and when the, when the, um, homeowner came out, we would talk to her. In the middle of the week, though, she got, I think it was on Tuesday, she got pneumonia, and she had to go to the hospital. But she was able to come back by Thursday. And she had some really nice great-grandkids, I think. And they came out and they helped some of the painting. And that was fun. Then we also, we went out on the street and we went up and down the neighborhoods talking to people. And if we saw anyone out, we would start a conversation with them. And we'd just go to, you know, like, do you guys go to church around here? Well, do you know Jesus as your Savior and Lord? And most people would say yes. But then there were, there were some people who didn't. There was one person who flat out denied it and he just said that he, he would, he was just going through life living and let living. And we tried to explain to him that you, you can't do that, that you need a savior. And he didn't really care. And he's just like, yeah, okay. He was fine talking to us. He wasn't mad at us or anything, but he, he wasn't going to listen. And we all ended up sharing our testimonies. We had so we all shared our testimonies with him of how we were saved and why we believed in Jesus Christ and he still wouldn't listen. So eventually we just had to leave and say, okay, you know, we'll, we're going to pray for you and we're going to keep you in our prayers and hope that you come to know Jesus. And for me, that was like, at first, I'd never really met anyone before who just flat out denied that Jesus was there. I mean, most people say, oh yeah, but you know, they're, they're not like, he was like, you know, he didn't believe at all. He was just like, sure, whatever, I don't care. And that was really different. And um, I had to think that we, like that one verse says, that we always need to be prepared to give an answer for the hope that is in us. And that really came to life, you know, when the, we came upon these weird, really weird people that uh, another day, they were 
they on first glance you would think they were African American people, but they said they were actually the descendants of Israel. I have no clue if they were or not, but they had some really weird beliefs. They said that when like after King James was dead, they got in the Bible and changed it, and that Jesus wasn't Jesus' real name, and a bunch of other strange stuff. And what I said to them, I said, well, you can't. You, the Bible cannot be changed. It says in the Bible that. Not a stroke or letter of the law will pass till Jesus comes back, and they, the, and it was really weird because they they were using Bible verses to try and prove their points, and so that that was kind of uh, definitely a new experience for me because I had never really met anyone like that, and so I we learned that we need to be ready for the people who will come out of there and they'll look like they have it all together even though they're wrong and it's hard to argue against them sometimes when they're just pulling verses out of the Bible. We'll, we'll keep them in our prayers. And so, um, then on Friday, we finished up our project, and then we, we had the celebration, and then we all had our final crew chat where we were all saying goodbye. I cried. I really did. <laughs> that was just me. I was the only one who did that. And I was really sad that we had to leave after that whole week. Um, and so, we left. And we, I saw some of them Saturday. Saturday morning as we were all leaving so I said goodbye then but it, it was a really great week and I'll miss all the people I met there and it was really cool that we could come together and help other people even though we barely knew each other at the time so I, I think it was a really cool experience I would definitely re recommend it for people and I think that you can learn a lot about yourself and Christ through it thanks Okay, my name is Shelby. Okay, so at first, I wasn't sure if I wanted to really go to World Changers, but then I thought about it, and I decided I wanted to, and I'm glad I did. My crew was painting, and I figured we were just going to paint and not, like, scrape, but I was, I was kind of wrong. So we ended up scraping for, like, three or two, two or three days, and we didn't think that we were going to finish because we had, like, so much other stuff to do. And then we, but finally we started priming. And then the other crew on our house was decking and they finished their deck like um, two or three days early. So they helped us finish painting and priming, which made things go by a little quicker. Then we had to leave early one day. So then we were like, oh, we're not going to finish. Like, and we weren't sure if we were able to go back. But then they told us we could. So we worked as hard as we could to finish. And then, um, and then, then once we finished painting, we helped out with like the yard and we helped with like, we helped the roof and caulking and we did all kinds of stuff like that. And once we finished, we worked even harder, like, we worked hard or whatever, and, <laughs> well, and then after we finished working, we had, like, one more gathering, and we got to sit with our crew, and we had to talk, we got to talk with our crew, and say goodbyes, and I learned a lot and drew a lot from the worships and devotions we had, and I encourage anyone who gets the chance to go out and help people and share the gospel to do so, and I also had lots of fun while doing it. Before Elena comes up, let me share something what Shelby has said. Um, we had four students at a site. And we're talking about being in Birmingham. Um, some neighborhoods are better than others, but we had four of our students in, at a site um, that there was gunfire just down the road. And so they had to, they had to get up and leave. I mean, we, we want to make sure the kids are protected and everything. And, um, you know, so they, they did leave and they left that day and weren't sure if they were going to be able to go back or not. So, um, the adults did a lot of talking to see what really happened, talk to police and that type of thing. And the students, all the students, they weren't scared. They, they look, we have to, we got to go back. We got to finish. Um, I think one of the students is going to share a little bit about one of the, the homeowner's son was, um, 
uh, they've been sharing the gospel with him, and they, they wanted to make sure they went back and was able to talk to him a little bit more. And uh, and if I'm not mistaken, that week he accepted Christ. And uh, but these students were um, they, they weren't. Um, I mean, we could be anywhere. We could be in the neighborhood back here and hear gunfire. I mean, um, so you could be anywhere and 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 have that type of danger. Um, but the kids' whole thought process was, we gotta go finish. We started something. We gotta finish. We, we need to go back to the neighborhood. We can't run. And uh, even though the gunfire was not at them, it was nothing like that. Um, but, but I just wanted to share that little bit with you um, before the, the rest of them come up. So, all right, come on, Lynn. Hi, I'm Elena. And I just was going to say that I felt really blessed to be able to go to World Changers. And part of what I enjoyed so much about it was that we got to go and we got to be with other like-minded believers. And not just like-minded believers, but those that are our age. And they, we could just fellowship with them and worship with them. And it was just really cool to meet so many other people that just, we had the same focus. And that focus was God and it wasn't us. And... Well, part of, well, earlier Thomas said that he had been hoping that he would be on a crew where he wasn't painting. Well, I was feeling the exact opposite way. I was hoping I would be painting because I don't know anything about construction or power tools, and I didn't want to hurt myself or hurt somebody else. And, but almost all of the crews, most of the crews were painting, and I got on a crew that was decking. And I wasn't sure how that was going to go, but I know that even in that, God had a plan for all of us because decking can really end up being you know, a three or four person job. And there are about 11 of us, of us on the crew that we were on. So some of the rest of us went and we just did yard work at the home that we were at instead of just decking because we couldn't all be decking at once. So we would do yard work, and we were able to do a lot of other work at the house that wouldn't have been done otherwise. And we were also able to help paint, help, help paint the house, help the other group finish. And so I know that even in that, God had a plan, even though I wasn't sure how I felt about that at first. And also, I just really enjoyed going and just... Like I said before, we were able to all have one focus about what we were doing, and it was God and it wasn't us. And so we just, when we would go out and evangelize, sometimes because we went a few times out into the neighborhood, and we evangelized to some of the people, and we just went out, and some of them we just talked to. We just were talking to them, and then we would just say, well, do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Or we might even start with, do you have a church home anywhere? And we would just get into a conversation about that. And that was one way that I had to personally stay focused on God the whole time because if I didn't, I knew that in my own strength I wouldn't have the words to say to anybody. I wouldn't know because I'm really not um, good at talking in front of people. And I'm kind of shaking right now. <laughs> but, and that's not my strong suit. That's not what I'm good at. That's not what I'm comfortable with, but what Mr. Nick, our speaker for the week at World Changers, he was preaching from 2 Corinthians, and one of the verses in there talks about, and this just really jumped out at me, that God is making all things new, and he is stretching us, and he was stretching me, even in having to talk to people or pray with people and say things that you know I wouldn't normally say, and I wouldn't know how to say. In my on my own, so I just really enjoyed getting to go, and I felt like I was moving in my life, and I know I wasn't the only one, and I know that's why we went, and that's just what I enjoyed having one focus, and it wasn't us. Thank you. Oh, Robert, Don, you're all coming though, right, man? You sure? All right, um, my name's Robert, and I was on the decking crew as well. We actually had a really good time, like, 
being able to spend time with each other and building the deck. It was actually a really interesting experience because all of us got a chance to use the tools and the power tools and all that. And none of us were injured, thankfully. And Tuesday night, we... Wait, no, Tuesday day. Tuesday. We... That was whenever less people were needed, so we started working on yard work and helping scrape off the paint. And that's whenever we started, like, actually talk, going out into the neighborhood and talking to people. And Wednesday, since we had a half day, we were kind of laid back. We just did as much as we could, and then we went out and did laser tag and went to the mall. And then Thursday, we kind of got cut short by the um, gunshots and all that. And so we went to uh, another church, and we went to a different neighborhood. And for the rest of the day, we just walked around and talked to people and prayed with people and spread the gospel. On Friday, we found out that we could go back to the house, and thankfully all of our crew did. So we managed to finish up the deck, and... We had to stay a little bit late, but we finished up painting as well. And then that night, we just talked with our crew. And we all came to the, to the consensus that it'd be really cool if we could work together again. And that we got one of the best crews there was. And we just had a really good time. Thank you. Everybody wants to hear Mr. Allen share, don't y'all? Yeah. Yeah. So the crowd, you get the crowd gets where they want, Allen. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm just going to share just a couple of things. First of all, the ones that went, who's in 12th grade, 11th grade, stand up, just so we can see. Okay, sit back down. 10th grade, 9th grade, 8th grade, 7th grade. Eighth grade's the last. Eighth the last. So that's a young group, okay? I, we, we've watched these kids really change this last year. And it and I, I'm just, uh, the only thing I can say, I was just proud to be there and be a part of you guys because you, you, just, you just stepped in and did everything. There was no problems this week. <laughs> it was good. That was good. But they are, I'm just, I really, I'm thankful that God has uh, put us, uh, Tony, in this church with you know and 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 i'm i'm just really proud to be able to share with you guys and to work with you and to train hopefully for the future and we're going to see some uh, young people that are going to be serving christ a long long time through this group so we just i just i thank you okay yeah, they did a great job yeah give my hand one of the last things i want to share um uh, like so they shared a lot about what they did on the sites and that type of thing. Um, the verse, the passage of scripture that we looked at all, all week is what I read this morning. I want to read it again now from Second Corinthians chapter five, starting in verse seventeen. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to Himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting the trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors of Christ. God making his appeal through us, we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And thinking about this verse and, and, and even some of the things they talked about um, they were there to deliver the ministry of reconciliation and that's what they had opportunity to do they, they worked on houses out the avenue they got to go in the neighborhoods but they were able to share the gospel this didn't happen this trip but this happened last year um, that they were telling me about because we had the same coordinators this year that were on there last year that they were going around the neighborhoods looking at houses and some of the neighborhoods are a little rougher and one of the neighborhoods they went to 
had a presence of a gang, but they talked to some of these guys in the gang and go, look, y'all won't have any problem. Y'all are here uh, doing something no one else will do. And so we're, we'll protect you. And this was last year what was said to them. We weren't in those neighborhoods this year. But they're going, they're taking a message that's maybe a message that nobody's ever heard before. Um, they're seeing people that they're not used to. They're seeing some of the real world, and they're serving the real world to bring the ministry of reconciliation because we've been reconciled to God. We are new creatures, and they want others to become new creatures. And thinking about all those things, ministry of reconciliation, and who can carry that, this is the biggest thing I took away from this week. First got there the, the, the first day, and there was this little short guy that was at the tables, and, and I first saw him, I thought, okay, he's just some guy from one of the churches. He's just kind of filling in. And his name was Nick. Um, Nick uh, was born, and I can't remember what, uh, what uh, the, the technical term was, but he didn't have a jaw. He couldn't hear. Um, a lot of different things. He had surgery throughout his life um, until his last surgery at 21. He's at Southern Seminary right now getting a, uh, uh, his doctorate. He's been through seminary and things. But when I first saw him, and he told me he's our speaker, I thought, oh, okay, wow, okay. You know, the speaking may not be that good because we look at first appearances sometimes. And Nick was one of these guys, and I actually told the kids first, I said, look, guys, um, the speaker's not what we would be used to I better not hear anybody make fun of Nick, okay? Then we won't have trouble. These guys fell in love with Nick. Everybody did. Nick was one of these guys that no matter his size and the things that went on with him in his life, he knew one thing, that God has changed his life, and that was his purpose. He was there. He went out with the kids at each different site to share the gospel, and he preached the gospel. Even though he had a slur in his speech, even though sometimes it was kind of hard to hear him, he knew the truth. And no matter what has happened in his life, no matter what people would think of him, he was going to take that truth to the people. And that spoke to me because you, you, you really can't judge a book by its cover. I mean, the well-spoken people, they, they, they mentioned that a while ago, somebody did about, you know, you look at people sometimes and think, oh, they, they must have it all together. Um, or, you know, look at them and, oh, man, they, they must really can work for God. But every one of us can. Every one of us has been given the ministry of reconciliation if we're in Christ. And he's given us the ability to go out and to share the gospel. Every one of us. So some of these students said, man, I'm, I, I don't speak in front of people. Uh, so, some of these students don't like talking to people, okay? I mean, I don't know if you know this. I know students well. They don't like to talk. Uh, not about anything serious anyway. Um, but they go out and, and, and God, I think, really worked through them and showed them some things about themselves. Um, we had people that were together on the cruise that they thought they would never have never, maybe no one hung out in the youth group. You had an 11th grader and a 7th grader. But guess what? They, I heard the other week, man, this other person's pretty cool. They, they got to know each other a little bit in, in these things. But they learned so much because, one, the church helped send them there um, through some of the donations you gave and those type of things for y'all praying for them. But they were able to do something that, that they some of them had never experienced before. And so just next year, we're, guys, do y'all want to go back? Yes. yes. All right. Are you sure? I don't have, we don't have to. Yes. yes, okay. This will be something I think will be a year thing. This is something that not just for the youth. I mean, they have jobs for everybody. Um, I mean, if, if you know construction and things like that, you can go and you can help serve. If, if you, hey, you know, you may not be a great at, at the construction part knowing what to do, but you say, hey, all I can do, I can drive a truck and take supplies to people. That's what people did. Um, Miss Rhonda went and she was the medic for the week for the first day coordinator. That's what she does here. I mean, she works at the hospital. There is a job that each and every one of you can do. Um, and this would be a great trip if any of you ever decide, hey, man, I, I want to go. Hang out with some amazing kids. Um, serve the Lord and take that ministry of reconciliation because if we've been reconciled to God, our, our job is to make sure other people are reconciled to God by taking the gospel. We can't save them, but we can make sure they know who can save them. So guys, thank you all so much for letting us go, uh, for letting Alan and I to be able to, to, to take that weekend and spend with the students. Students, thank you all for, 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 you, for your week and everything you all did. Um, I could not... I'd be prouder uh, of this group, and, uh, and I really think, and I, I don't say this just to, to say it, I really think we do have 
um, the best youth group there is. So uh, will you all pray with me? Our dear, gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you for the testimonies of our students. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, just for the work that you did. Lord, there were seeds that were planted. Lord, there were things that that uh, that you were doing that week. Lord God, we never, never see this side of heaven. But Lord, I pray that the world changes was not the end of what you're doing in our students' life, but the very beginning. And Lord God, they will continue to grow. They will learn from their experiences, Lord, and they'll bring these things here and share in the gospel. Lord, they'll bring these things here, Lord God, to make a difference in Gulfport. And Lord God, that we will just um, be blessed, Lord God, because of all the great things you're doing in and through us. Lord, again, thank you for the opportunity to serve you. And we pray for these things, your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. One more thing I, I forgot to share, just some things that you can pray about. Um, the, the house, my house in particular, I, I was at, we had a lady um, that um, she was very faithful in church, knew the word. She and I spent a lot of time talking to one another, and she, she said, I just don't know how to repay y'all. And I said, well, you don't need to repay us. We didn't come for that. And I said, but this is what I asked. Our students have been walking around. They've been sharing the gospel. Um, all I want you to do is make sure you keep watering those seeds. I mean, she was a believer. She 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 her she she said that she was in her church an ordained um, evangelist. Um, and I asked her. I said, "Well, make sure you go around." And this is what she told me. She said, "I've been in this neighborhood for 11 years." And she goes, and, and she didn't like the neighbor on this side and didn't like the neighbor on this side, but she knew those people and she knew the person in front of her. She had not talked to anybody else in the neighborhood. She didn't know anybody else. Been there 11 years, was a minister of the gospel, supposedly, but she wasn't taking the gospel out. Guys, let them make sure we're not that same type of people, that we're not taking the gospel um, when we do have this ministry of reconciliation. I'm sorry, I meant to say that beforehand, but I want to make sure I said that now. Thank you very much. I think Randy's got some things to say. Thank you, brother, for the time that you gave us. Let's, uh, let's give our young people a hand. I, uh, I want to say how much I appreciate Tony and Alan. It's such a joy being able to pastor this church and have such an outstanding pastoral staff. What was it you did, Alan? Work encourager? Was that what? Huh? Crew encourager. Crew encourager. If I go, can I be an encourager? A work encourager or something? Okay. Okay. No, seriously. I, I, I leaned over to Brent. I couldn't help it halfway through. God, If God lets me live and y'all let me serve... In three months, I'll finish my seventh year as pastor here. And I leaned over to Brenda and I said, Brenda, is it sinking home tonight that this is a whole nother level of youth ministry that we've not seen here before? And I want to say to you guys how very, very proud I am of you. You know, youth ministry where it's uh, flash in a pan, pizza parties, and loud rock Christian music and and, you know, we call that youth ministry sometimes in America. Uh, that's not going to change your life. What you're doing right now, what you're participating in, will change your life. And uh, more important, will bring glory to Christ. And I just want you to know I'm really, really proud of you guys. Keep it up, okay? Keep it up.